Hey everybody, it's Amy from Amazing and today I'm having a Q&A about the basic questions that you could have about BGDs. So first question, what does BGD or ABGD stand for? BGD stands for Ball Jointed Doll and ABGD stands for Asian Ball Jointed Doll since these dolls are usually from uh, Asia. It's basically what they are, they are ball jointed which means they have these ball joints um, in between their limbs which means they can pose really really well and they are strung with some sort of elastic as you can see um, which goes through their entire body they're usually made out of resin but there are also some BGDs that are made out of plastic and some are even made out of clay and now the second question which I get quite a lot is how much do BGD cost? that depends a lot on the size, on the material on the company where you get your BGD from and it also depends on how much you get with the said doll. Usually smaller dolls are cheaper. The higher the quality of the resin, the more expensive they usually are. The less expensive the materials, the less expensive your doll is going to be. For example, plastic dolls that are made of ABS are usually a lot cheaper. And then of course, posability. If your doll is very um, Posable and has very complicated joint systems That means it's probably going to be more expensive and of course a brand doll is probably going to be more expensive um, There is lots of different companies out there that make BGDs and some are more expensive and some are less expensive but basically you can get anything from $30 up to over a thousand dollars I'm going to show you two examples of what a $30 doll would be and what you would get for $30 and I'm also going to show you a almost a thousand dollar BGD and compare the two of them. And the doll I'm showing you is a Huchu mini pin in grey. Um, they will come with no eyes, no clothes, no face up, which means uh, face up is the paint on their faces and this is also without shipping so you would have to incorporate that as well so the second doll i'm showing you is an apple house rachel in light brown skin we're going to assume that you will get the mobility type body you will get a face up by the company you get two different outfits full outfits um, and you will get hand blushing a pair of random eyes you will get high and flat feet and that makes a total of $962 but this doll is a lot bigger first of all and second of all you get lots and lots of different stuff and you basically have an entire full set of a doll number three sizes how the hell do they work <laughs> This is very confusing for a newbie. I remember as uh, when I was new to the hobby, I was completely confused. I had no idea about what was going on with all of these different uh, size names. It didn't make any sense to me. So I'm here to explain them. There are usually three types of dolls. There is large, mini and tiny. Large dolls can range from 50 centimeters to 70 centimeters. Mini go from 36 centimeters to 49 centimeters and tiny dolls go from 9.5 centimeters up to 35 centimeters. There's also different bust sizes for girls usually so you can get bigger busts for, from some companies and some offer smaller ones as well. You will always have to check your company. That's the thing that varies from company to company. Some company offers that option and some don't. And there's also different feet. There's uh, heel feet usually and flat feet. And some companies offer both of those when you get it all and some don't. You have to, you would have to purchase the heel feet by themselves. And now I get to the size range that most people use, which is the most common, which is Vox brand sizes. So Vox was one of the first BGD companies out there and basically uh, what happened was 
they had a specific name for every size of doll and after more companies came out they just used those names from Volks to describe their sizes as well. But technically they are brand sizes so you wouldn't necessarily call every company's size the same size as the ones from Volks. So some people don't like to use that. But they are really easy to uh, remember, so there is the most common size, which is SD or Super Dolphy. These are usually 60 centimeters tall. They're also known as SD13 or one third scale. Then there's MSD or Mini Super Dolphy. These are about 42 centimeters um, usually, and they're also known as one fourth scale dolls. Then there's Yoistis, which comes from the Japanese word uh, for infant and they are usually about 26 centimeters. They're also known as 1 sixth scale dolls. If you want to see the different sizes next to each other, I will link down uh, below some videos where you can basically see the different sizes next to one another and compare them. So next question, what does my doll come with exactly? And that depends a lot um, on where you get your doll from. It depends on the company and it also depends on what you select uh, to get with, to get with your doll. So for that you sadly have to do your own research because I can't answer for every specific doll what you're going to get with it because that's such a broad um, spectrum of things you can get and you have to do your own research on that. And that's very important in a BGD hobby in general. Do your research before you purchase a doll. Um, I'm going to show you what my my doll here, Kitty, came with. She is a Soul doll, Siyung A, in normal skin, and I purchased her together with a face-up, which means she already was painted. I had to pay a little bit more than uh, the normal price, with, and other than that she didn't come with anything else as you can see she was just the basic body and she also had a face which meant I had to get my wig on my own I had to get um, all of my clothing on my own so next question where do I get my doll now so there is so so many BGD companies out there where you can choose uh, to get your doll from and there's also lots of resellers. There is a site called Den of Angels which is a ginormous BGD site for all sorts of people in the hobby to share every bit of information they know and there's a wonderful list on basically every reseller and every different company out there. Do your research before you purchase your doll. A lot of newbies sadly make the mistake of buying a recast without knowing that they are. Recasts are seen as bad by lots and lots of people in this hobby uh, since they are stolen artworks and they basically count as theft. So you want to do your research before you purchase a doll so you don't accidentally get a recast. But I don't want to go into that whole dealio. That is a very, very sensitive topic in this BGD hobby. I just want to put that out there. There are recasts out there and you want to be careful with what you get and you want to do your research before you get a BGD. So next question. Where do I get my clothes, shoes and wigs from? Once again, there is lots and lots of companies and sellers that um, offer so, so many accessories, clothes, shoes, wigs, everything basically. You have to do your own research on that as well. But there is Etsy where people make handmade stuff and sell them and there is so so much amazing stuff. I also have a, a list of my favorite Etsy sellers in one of my videos. There you can click the video where I linked all of my favorite Etsy sellers. Uh, in the description. There's lots of amazing eBay sellers out there. Uh, there's Alice's collection which I love very very much. And of course you can make them yourself. You can start sewing or crocheting. There's lots of people who make miniatures like me 
or even make their wigs themselves. There's lots of tutorials out there on how to do that. Now we've answered all of the basic questions that you can have about BGDs and now I'm going to answer all of the questions that you sent in via Instagram on the post where I asked you what you would love to know. So I have my phone here with all of the questions that you asked. And the first question comes from Bats Bats in the Belfry. How to clean those little nooks and crannies in their sculpts? The lips will be the death of me. <laughs> yes, there is actually lots of tutorials on how to remove face-ups. One person I recommend a lot is called Lomi's Playground. They have a video showing very much in detail how they remove their face-ups. And um, yeah, they just show that very much in detail and they have very, very nice tips on how to do that. Um, then there's also Andrea, um, which you probably know. She's a very, very famous uh, BGD YouTuber. And she also has a video on how to remove face-ups and specifically shows how she removes all of these little bits in between their mouths. But other than that, practice and lots of patience. You don't want to rush things, you want to really take your time and remove all of that uh, stuff in their face. <laughs> it's, it just takes a while, you have to be patient. And a question that sort of goes together with the question from before is how do you paint dolls? And um, most people use a sealant which is called MSC or Mr. Super Clear in matte. And they spray that on their doll. It's a very toxic thing, so you want to do that outside and with a proper um, respirator. I can only tell you guys what I use. I use watercolor pencils, pastels, and I also use acrylics and gouache paint. But there is many, 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 many tutorials on how people paint their BGDs. So next question comes from Ilin Jalama. I hope that's I pronounced it right. <laughs> Uh, which are the best groups, forums, pages, sites to meet people and be educated in the hobby? And how to find doll people in your area? Uh, I would have to say that Instagram and Den of Angels. Um, Den of Angels has a specific thread on where people post different doll meets in, uh, well, everywhere over the world. And there you can find people in your area the best. And on Instagram I found most people and also on YouTube I found lots of people that uh, were sort of in my area, kind of, because there's not a lot of people here in Europe who collect BGDs, uh, at least where I live here in Austria, there's just not a lot of people. <laughs> but yeah, there is some and I would say Den of Angels and Instagram and of course YouTube are the best places uh, for me to find BGD lovers. I'm not on Facebook myself so I don't really know uh, anything about that but I'm pretty sure Facebook is also an, a, a very nice place to start. Next question comes from Shanata Shamochi. I hope that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> I'm really sorry if I butchered your, na your name, but um, how to change clothes or put clothes on a BGD? So that depends a lot on what type of doll you have and it also depends what type of clothing you have. But usually you have to take off the wigs and um, you have to take off their heads for that. So I have Katie here. I already took off her wig and her hat. You want to take off their head cap and there you can see the S hook in there. I use, <laughs> this is actually a crocheting needle. So what I do is I lift up the S hook like this. I just hold down the head a bit and then I lift it up and pull it to the side until it sits there in this nook down below. Then you can take off their heads. And this way it's a lot easier um, to undress them for taking off shirts and stuff like that. And pants and all sorts of um, dresses or skirts like these, they're very easy to take off. You just pull them off and stuff. <laughs> but yeah, shirts are a bit more complicated. And if you want to take off hands, that's very complicated on most BGDs. I hate doing that, but 
bang fully. I don't have to do that on this dolly. But uh, if you want to have a specific video where I show how to take off hands, I can do that. So the next two questions come from Milk Flavored. And the first question is, is stringy hard and do they need stringy often? Because I'm thinking of getting one, but I don't know whether to get an Obiza doll or a doll that is strung. And stringy BGDs looks extremely hard to do. Um, so I haven't had to string any of my dolls except for a kitty. And the way I did that was actually pretty damn easy. So the thing I did was... Uh, her stringing wasn't super duper um, loose, but it was kind of loose. So what I did was I took these part, I basically just uh, pulled her torso and her upper body apart. And I, then I took out the stringing and made a tighter knot. That's all I did. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's how you're supposed to do it. Usually people... Um, unstring their entire doll and then restring their dollies but that was a bit too much of an effort for me so I didn't do that <laughs> but yeah that's how it worked for me and it wasn't super hard to do and that just depends a lot on the doll um, for example all of my other dolls never had any um, problems I, I didn't have to restring them they're still strung perfectly uh, I have had Ryan for three years now and he's still strung amazingly tight and amazingly uh, wonderful. <laughs> I, I love the way he's strung and I don't plan on restringing him. But there's lots of restringing tutorials and uh, specifically for a dolly you would want to look up how to restring your doll specifically but because there's different ways of stringing a doll. And um, yeah, I sadly cannot answer this very well because it's such a specific question because it depends on what dolly you have. But usually people tell me that restringing BGDs and having the right restringing tools is not as hard. They also asked uh, a second question which is um, are BGDs easy to break or damage? Um, that also depends a lot on the brand. Um, I would say yes. BGDs are usually very fragile. They are made out of resin or plastic or clay and clay is definitely the um, less sturdier material and then comes resin and then comes plastic. Plastic tends to um, be the sturdiest but uh, I would say if you are unsure if you want to get ABGD because uh, you're, you, you don't uh, feel comfortable handing them uh, super carefully, then get a Monster High for example first. Monster Highs are a great way to start uh, or get an Obitsu because BGDs can break. They can fall down or um, they can, for example, hit something and you break one of their fingers or they even break sometimes during shipping. They are fragile and um, you never want to touch your face-ups uh, because they can ship off because of our oils uh, on our fingers which is a natural thing sadly so you don't want to touch their face-ups ever. And uh, another thing I'm going to answer is uh, yellowing. Your doll is also going to yellow. Um, resin usually yellows over the time, so that's also a thing you have to keep in mind when you get a BTD. But yeah, they are usually fragile. But yeah guys, that's already it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this Q&A and if you want to have any other questions answered, please write them down, down below or um, send them to me via Instagram uh, direct message. I would love to answer all of them, uh, either in a comment or I'm going to make a specific video about them. So, I will see you guys in my next video and thank you so so much for watching. I love you so much. Bye bye!